Welcome back everyone to your Oracle SQL tutorial series. This video we are going to be talking about the number data type. So, what is so stinking special about the number data type? You know what it is? It's that it can store whole numbers and decimal numbers. So it can store integers and real numbers. Both <laughs> in one data type. So that means we could store something like two or we could store 2.2. I know that doesn't seem like a big deal, but it is. It's really super cool. Oracle attracts my liking because it has fewer data types that are more versatile rather than some other database management systems that'll have like four data types to do the same thing. <laughs> Now number can be used to store huge numbers. It can also be used to store very small numbers. And I'm not talking like one or two, I'm talking like 0 .000000 whatever, nine or five or whatever. Something smaller than one. Now the Oracle docs, you can get the specifics on the range of acceptable values. But in general, you're not going to have to worry a whole lot about it because this can store pretty big numbers. Now the thing with this is that it's stored in scientific notation. Now the chances are when you learn this in like third grade, you were sleeping. <laughs> I mean, I was too, I had to relearn all this stuff. <laughs> so let's do a quick recap. It's essentially a way to express a number using a power of 10. So we could say 2.2 times 10 to the zero. 10 to the zero evaluates to one. So 2.2 times one equals 2.2. Now you could theoretically take this dot and move it. So we could move it this way or we can move it that way. Generally it's supposed to be right there. So this is a really crappy example, but let's say we had the number 37. That's, that's a good example. 37 dot now. We could take this dot and move it. And that will change the power of 10. So now we have 3.7 times 10 to the one, which evaluates to 10. So 3.7 times 10 equals 37. You can see we represented the same exact number two different ways, either 37 times 10 to the zero with, or 3.7 times 10 to the first. Now we really don't have to worry a whole lot about the scientific notation part of this. That's all kind of done behind the scenes. So what we need to worry about is significant digits. We could represent this as 7.7 .7 times 10 to the to fourth. <laughs> I had to think about that one pretty hard. And the way we get that is we start here with a decimal, one, two, three, four, which leaves us right there. And you can see we really only have two digits that are important to us, seven and seven. You could say that these digits are significant. So we really don't care about zeros. I mean, don't take it offensively zero. I personally care a lot about you, but in general, no one really cares about the zeros because in this situation, they're not considered significant. The actual number of significant digits is our biggest limit. Now the limit from this data type comes from either the significant digits or from the total size. We can only store so many significant digits and at some point our number is not going to qualify. Or we could just be trying to store a number that is way too stinking huge, like 2.2 .2 times 10 to the 3,000th or 3,001. <laughs> And in general, that's just way too stinking big. <laughs> now, when you declare this data type, you have the option of specifying two extra options. So many options. It's like Subway. <laughs> oh, that was so cheesy. So we can specify the precision and the scale. And these are defined in parentheses when we give the data type. So something like this. This is the precision and that's the scale. If you decide to set a precision, you have the options of giving a value one through 38. And what this number refers to is the total number of digits in your number. So for example, this number has one, two, three digits. So we could say that the precision is three. Scale, on the other hand, 
is the number of digits after the decimal point. So in this situation, the scale is two. And note that the precision includes the scale. So the entire number is considered for the precision, but only the number after the decimal point is considered for the scale. So to quiz you a little bit, think about the maximum and the minimum values for something like this. To figure this out, you can subtract the scale from the precision, and that'll give you the number of digits before the decimal. So we're going to have four, and the biggest numbers would be nine, 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 nine. And two of those are gonna be reserved for after the decimal, nine, nine. And also the negative of that, so negative 9999.99. The scale is a little bit interesting because the actual acceptable values for the scale is negative 84 up to 127. <laughs> and I'll explain how that makes sense of having a negative scale and also having a scale that's bigger than your precision, but that is a topic for another video. The biggest thing to take away from this is that if you're going to specify the precision and scale, the scale affects the size of the biggest number. Because if we have, let's say, a precision of six, like this example, and we say a scale of two, well, we are cutting the max size of our number by two digits. So if we had six for the precision and the scale was zero, we could store this. And this would allow for a much larger number. So if a bigger number is what you want, then you are going to want to keep the scale as low as possible and the precision as high as possible. Because think you can only store up to 38. But if you want a lot of numbers after the decimal point, you can make the scale very big and the precision very big. So that is your introduction to the number data type. We will be discussing it more, of course, because there's still a lot of more information we need to cover. But this is a great introduction for you guys. So thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to click like. And as always, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Whoa.